What's up YouTube, Jeff back again today with a very exciting Samsung video for you guys. And today I'm gonna to make a video I've been trying to make for quite a while, which is how to switch from a iPhone to a Galaxy phone. Something I'm very passionate about. I know this is gonna be one of my longest videos ever, but I actually use a MacBook Pro as my main computer. And I also sometimes use an iPad, although I do have a Samsung tablet as well. So because I do live in both ecosystems, I think I can give a unique perspective on what are some of the challenges in living in the Android ecosystem. And also if you wanna move from an iPhone, because I use an iPhone as well, to a Samsung phone, what kind of challenges you might have. So I'm gonna talk about that today, very excited. Before we get started, I wanna thank my son, Jonathan. He's three years old, he always goes some dinos for the video. We got the baby T-Rex, the blue parasol of is here. They're gonna be hanging out. And I also wanna remind you guys that if you are gonna be switching from an iPhone to a Samsung device, make sure you subscribe for my newsletter. My newsletter is on my website. And uh, we also do mystery boxes for every single launch. You get a free case, cleaning kit, desktop phone stand. If you buy a Samsung phone through our Samsung affiliate link, uh, you can check that out as well as subscribe for the newsletter where you get more great tips and also know about the mystery boxes when they open. So that'll be in the comments, pinned comment description if you're interested. So I have a really long list today. This is a Google Keep document, by the way, which I'll talk a little bit more about later in this video. But uh, I use these to kind of keep track of my thoughts and I have a very long list of everything you'll need to know and some of the questions people have when they switch from an iPhone to a Samsung phone. The first two, let me address them together, iMessage and FaceTime. So yes, there's no iMessage, no iMessage, no FaceTime. Knocked over the parasol all of us there. Let me fix them and put them back there on the back of the desk. No iMessage and no FaceTime on a Samsung Galaxy phone. However, you can actually get iMessage on Android, not directly, not into the stock messaging app, but this app right here, which I use called Beeper, allows you to get iMessage with a workaround. It's not perfect. Um, Beeper had it working for a while where it actually did work perfect, but Apple then kind of cut them off. So if you don't know about Beeper, what it is, if you search the Play Store, you'll find it. It allows you to use basically the cloud and an Apple verification code for iMessage if you own a Mac or a jailbroken older iPhone to get iMessage. So I use this and I do have iMessage on my device here. Let me actually go in here and I'll show you. I don't wanna put anybody on blast, but I'll go down to the iMessage section. Right here, I have iMessage. These are iMessages, some of these are spam ones, but these are iMessages with some of my iMessage um, contacts here at the end. So I really like using iMessage on my Android phone, but I don't really talk to that many people who have iPhones only. So for me, it's not a huge deal. If you use iMessage a lot and you don't wanna use Beeper or you can't because you don't have a MacBook or you don't have an old iPhone you could jailbreak, then the alternative is you can either use WhatsApp or you could use Google Chat, which is down here I have on both phones as well, Facebook Messenger. Um, but the problem is you have to get everybody to switch to those. So I think Beeper or some of the other options like Blue Bubbles, which is another app on the Play Store you can search for, or Sunbird Messaging, which allow you to get iMessage on your Galaxy phone are the best way to go. Like I said, I have this app on my phone. I've used iMessage flawlessly, but there are some things you need to make the workaround work. That's the first and biggest thing switching from iPhone to Android is you're gonna lose your iMessage and then you're gonna lose your FaceTime as well. With FaceTime, you know that you can call anybody that's in your iMessage contacts automatically and get in touch with them via video. There is though a workaround on Samsung phones and it does work with iPhone as well. But once again, the downside is you have to let your friends know that you're gonna be switching. So just like you have the option to use Google Messages or Google Chat for your messaging, Google Meet is the video app for video calling across all Samsung Android phones, Google Pixel, OnePlus, whatever. So if you're switching to any Samsung phone or any Android phone, you can then use this. Now your contacts can install it on their iPhone and you'll be able to call them. The downside once again is you have to let people know that you're switching in order to make this work. Because if you don't let them know you're switching, they won't install the app and then you obviously won't be able to call them. The big selling point of FaceTime and iMessage is that they're on the iPhone by default. You don't have to go and download some third-party app. You can see I have Google Meet on my iPhone over here because I use everything kind of in a cross-platform way. So those are the first two things. Next, AirDrop and iCloud Photos. Those are other things that people always ask me about when they're gonna switch from an iPhone to a Samsung phone. What about AirDrop and what about using my iCloud Photos for backup all my photos? 
The photo solution on Android is actually better than iCloud Photos, and that's Google Photos, which is right here. The backup solution is better, the interface is better. It also works across all your different devices and on the web in a nicer interface than iCloud Photos. So I'm just a bigger fan of using it. Um, that's, I think, going to be seamless for most people. Uh, I have it on my iPhone as well, which you can see right there, Google Photos. So it's not really that difficult to get the photo sharing solution going. That's pretty simple. Now, AirDrop is amazing. I don't want to downplay how hard it is to leave AirDrop because AirDrop is a solution that lets you take your video that you shoot on your iPhone and automatically move it over here to your Mac to edit, something that I use on my iPhones fairly often. However, what I will say is Samsung and Google have come together to improve this a lot when it comes to Android. So now when it comes to sharing, you have Quick Share, which is Samsung's original sharing protocol that allows you to basically do the same thing as AirDrop to any PC or other Samsung phone or tablet. Here's a photo of my messy desk I took earlier. If you go into the share icon inside the gallery, you can now use Quick Share and you see the little icons that allow you to quick share to your various devices. This is my tablet here, my Tab S9 Ultra. I have a Tab S9 FE as well. And then you can hit Quick Share right here. And not only can you share it to you know, your phone or any other devices, you can share it to a PC, share it to your other phones. I have another S24 Ultra on the desk uh, or any Samsung, you know, like, PC that you have, Samsung laptop, Galaxy book, whatever, but it is only going to work with Windows and other Samsung devices. And I think Chromebook soon, it does not work with your MacBook. So this is a challenge and there is a great option if you need to just send it and it, you can send it to someone with an iPhone, for instance, you can create a link. Uh, and then once you create the link, you can share that with someone else. So it is nice in that you have options. It's not like it's impossible to use quick share um, if you use a MacBook, but you do have to be a little careful um, with how you go about sharing and you have to be cognizant that it's not going to work necessarily exactly the same as it would on a MacBook uh, with your iPhone. There's going to be some challenges using Quick Share versus AirDrop as well. The next thing is the Apple Music app. So the Apple Music app, thankfully, is a very simple one. This won't take that long. If you go into the Play Store, you can download the Apple Music app just by going Apple Music hit the search button. There you go. Apple Music, download the application. It's available on Android. It's available on your Samsung phone. You don't have to do anything. You're all set. Sign in with your Apple account. You get all of your stuff that you had before. If you have Apple Music subscription, your subscription will be restored. So that's good to go. Uh, Apple Pay, you can then move to either Samsung Pay or Google Pay, which is GPay. Um, Samsung Pay used to have some significant advantages over GPay. But personally, I use GPay now just because it's across all of my different Android devices. Samsung used to have the advantage that you could basically utilize the um, MST, the Magnetic Stripe Reading Technology, and you didn't necessarily need someone who had um, a NFC reader. But mostly everyone has NFC now. Mostly there's no one who would really benefit from, you know, no retailers where that would actually be beneficial. So I mainly use GPay now for that reason, but you have to make a decision of which payment operator you want to use on your Android phone. Apple Watch, so if you have an Apple Watch, obviously, unfortunately, it's not going to work with your Samsung phone. So you're going to need to then move over there. I have an Apple Watch as well. Where's the watch app? I don't know. I have an Apple Watch as well, but my Apple Watch, obviously right there is an Apple Watch icon, Apple Watch Ultra 2. I will be 100% honest with you as well. I personally find the Apple Watch Ultra 2 to be the best smartwatch out there there is. Um, it is better battery life and quite a few other things, just app compatibility versus the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic or Watch 5 Pro. I own both of them. They are not terrible substitutes and would I recommend using only an iPhone to get a better watch? No, I would never do that um, because I have the option of having my iPhone with me as well. I often choose to wear my Apple Watch. If I had to recommend a watch, I would probably recommend, if you care about battery life, the Watch 5 Pro right now. This is being made in February of 2024. If you really care about like the sleeker look, um, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is a nicer watch. It's also a newer one, um, but the battery life isn't quite as good. So you have to make a decision there. Uh, your notes, so obviously on Apple, you have the notes application. Uh, I use Google Keep even on my iPhone, and that's what I'm using over here to make this notes list. You can download that directly from the Play Store. It is not there by default on most Samsung phones, so just keep that in mind. Um, you'll have to go and download it yourself from the Play Store, but I use it, it's great. You guys have seen me use it in this video, and I really enjoy it. 
uh, voice assistants. So of course you've got Siri on the iPhone. You can just say, hey Siri. And then, you know, the iPhone will do stuff for you. But on the Samsung phone, you have Bixby and Google Assistant. Now, depending on what you wanna do, each of them have sort of their own strengths. Um, the Google Assistant is really great for getting information, uh, whereas Bixby is really great for essentially everything else. So if you go in here, you can obviously get your Google Assistant from your Google feed. You can also get it from the swipe up gesture um, or swipe down gesture on the home screen. Uh, you can also map it to long press the button on your Galaxy phone and get Google Assistant or Bixby. Bixby is really great at doing on-device stuff. So if you set up Bixby, it can you know do a lot of things for you in terms of if you want to set a bunch of chain of events together to occur, Bixby is really good at that. For instance, quick commands, Bixby seconds, type a command. You can also type here with Bixby instead of just using voice commands, which is a nice thing. And a lot of these quick commands like productivity and you need to do stuff, you can just say specific things and it will do them for you. You can create routines. It's very, very good at that. So those of you who are used to doing some of that um, with the application on the iPhone to set up various routines, you can also do that with Bixby and it's very good for on-device processing. So I think the combination of Bixby and Google Assistant together is actually better than Siri, at least in my opinion, and using both of these devices on a daily basis. But you do have to kind of use both depending on what it is you want to accomplish um, in order to exceed what Siri can do. Uh, HomeKit, so if you use a lot of Apple HomeKit for your smart home stuff on your iPhone, then you'll obviously want to move some of your smart home stuff over. You can use the Google Home application on Samsung, and that is usually not by default. So you'll need to go again to the Play Store, search for Google Home to find it. It's very intuitive though. And also I recommend a lot of the Google devices for smart home. You may already have some like a Nest, a Nest Cam, Nest Doorbell. So a lot of that stuff's gonna integrate perfectly. We have all that stuff in my house and it integrates perfectly. The app is also very easy to use, very intuitive. So I don't think you really lose anything there in terms of functionality. Now, of course, Apple has the stock mail app on the iPhone where you can go and put all of your accounts. A lot of people are used to using those. On Samsung, you then are going to need to use Gmail or a third-party application. You guys can see this one right here I have on both of my phones. This is the Spark email client, which is really, really good. And I actually use it for one thing in particular. On Samsung phones, sometimes I don't get real-time notifications from my emails. It's just because of how Samsung optimizes the battery usage. It's very annoying. So I use Spark because Spark doesn't have that limitation that's placed on it by Google using Google services. So I can automatically get all my notifications autom you know, right away instead of waiting two minutes, which is usually the delay I have in Gmail. So I recommend Spark. Give it a try if you're moving over um, from iOS to Samsung. But there's also a number of third-party uh, mail applications on the Play Store. I'll drop some links below to some other ones that I've used that you might be interested in. The next thing is to import your bookmarks from Safari to Chrome. So this you have to do on your desktop. What you'll do is you'll go into Safari, download all of your bookmarks. You know, once you're in Safari, download your bookmarks, then you can import them into Chrome. You can either do that on the desktop as well. And then they'll show up here in your mobile version of Chrome as well. So you'll have all of your bookmarks. That's really not, not that bad. You can do that pretty much with any PC or computer as well. Uh, iCloud backup, you can use either Samsung account backup or Google Drive. Um, to do this. So if you wanna back up all of your stuff, Samsung account backups integrated into the Samsung settings. So if you go into the settings menu here at the top, you'll see at the very top, if you go into Samsung account here, it'll have the information, your profile, all of your stuff. And you can also go down here to Samsung Cloud, sync, backup everything. You can then use Samsung Pass, which will allow you to save all those passwords, just like you had on your iCloud keychain. Uh, and then you can import those into Samsung Pass. Now, another option, is to use a third-party app like LastPass um, or 1Password, which I also use, and that syncs them across all of your devices. is a great, a great setting. And you can do Samsung Find here. Samsung Find basically is kind of like find my iPhone, find my device. You can use Galaxy Tags, just like AirTags, put them on your devices and then find them You know when they're lost or if you need to just ring them to find out where they are. So backup and restore there. And also Samsung Password or 1Password. Uh, calendar events, you need to move over your calendar events. For calendar sync, I recommend the One Calendar application. This will allow you to sync all of your calendars in one place. You can also use the Google Calendar app, but I prefer One Calendar personally. And for contacts, you can use Google's own contact app, but you can actually back these up directly inside of the Samsung contacts 
in your Samsung phone application. And if you already have Google Contacts on your iPhone as well, which you can install, you can back up everything from your iPhone in terms of contacts and then restore them from the Google Contacts app on your Galaxy phone. Uh, social media quality, I hear a lot about this when people move from iPhone to Samsung or Android. Uh, the social media quality in terms of sharing like on Snapchat or Instagram used to be less, it used to be worse on Samsung devices. With the S24 Ultra, Samsung put a lot of effort, a lot of time into making sure that's not the case. Uh, you can share videos and stuff. I don't use Snapchat a ton, but I've heard from people that things have improved a lot on that front. And on Instagram, I'm able to share everything and the quality is pretty much the same as it is on the iPhone. That's a problem that existed in the past, but doesn't really exist anymore. So I don't think that's something you should be too worried about when moving. A duplication of apps. So this is something you should watch out for on Samsung and Android phones. On your iPhone, you pretty much have just one calendar app, one phone app, one keyboard. On Samsung phones and Android in general, you might have multiple apps. So see, I have two calendar apps here. I also have two messaging apps, messages, messenger, and I have another messages that's hidden. I have Samsung messages, Google messages, and Facebook messenger. Uh, and then I also have Samsung calendar and Google calendar. So you can have a bunch of duplicate apps. Uh, you have to be aware of this. You can choose to hide apps when you go in here to customize your settings for the app shown in the app drawer. Um, and that way you're only showing the one that you're using. Of course, uninstall them. I review a lot of apps, so I like to compare them and play around with them. But if you don't need them, you can just kind of install one. But be aware there's a lot of choice. That's also a good thing because you can find the one that works for you and the one that allows you to get, you know, the best experience on your phone. Uh, you should back up iCloud and iTunes before getting rid of your phone, obviously. Make sure you have all of your music and stuff backed up, you know, all that. iTunes purchases are not going to transfer, obviously. Uh, in terms of to the Google Play Store. So if you have apps or things like that or music that you bought, you want to back up those files and obviously restore them uh, by just importing the MP3 files, which you can do by transferring over. You could do something like Google Drive um, or use something like Dropbox to store your files and then import them for music. But that is something to be aware of in terms of iTunes. Emojis, I've heard some people say the Samsung emojis don't look as good as the ones on iOS, I, I don't know that I necessarily agree with this, but uh, you can kind of take a look at the different emojis that we have here and there. I mean, I kind of like, I don't mind either one of them, but some people, I guess the younger crowd says this. There are iOS emoji keyboards on Samsung or Android on the Play Store. I don't recommend them because they don't work in all the apps and they also tend to cause some crashes and bugs. They're not the best quality. So I'm not gonna tell you to do that. I would personally hope that if you switch that you can get used to these because uh, right now the options of kind of replacing them, it, it's not a great option. It's not going to give you a great experience on your S24 Ultra. Uh, so here are some things now that you can do once you've actually made the switch and got a lot of the apps set up. Uh, this was kind of just telling you guys what are the equivalent applications that you need and what are some of the pain points of switching. So what are some of the big benefits of switching now that I've talked about some of the pain points. And uh, for this, I guess I can kind of, you know, move the iPhone out of the way for a second. The first thing you should do is learn to use your S Pen. There's a ton of things you can do with the S Pen that you don't have, obviously, on iOS. I made a full S Pen tips and tricks video, but you can customize everything. Basically, you can customize all these things that go on the side menu over here. You can solve math equations uh, using your phone if you're in school, things like that using the Microsoft Math Equation Solver. Um, you can use, you can customize all these menus as well. If you download the Samsung GoodLock application and you download Pentastic, you can actually change how the uh, S menu looks. You can change it to a line or a circle when it pops up here. Uh, you can change the background, the brightness, the blur, all this kind of stuff right here. And you can change the pointer. So you can have different size pointers. You can have different colors. You can even choose a custom graphic. And one of my favorites is you can change the double tap shortcut. If you double tap something, it opens up a specific application. One of those that I really like is to double tap Instagram. Since I use this a lot for cropping photos on Instagram, it automatically opens it. Just press the button. So I'll drop the link below to my full S Pen tips and tricks video, which I think you guys will like. Um, but learning the S Pen is definitely a useful feature once you start using your Samsung phone. Sending videos in high quality using QuickShare. I mentioned this already earlier. But another question that people have when sending videos 
to their friends who are using iPhones from Android to iPhone. Sometimes the quality is degraded if you send it just in a regular text. If you use Beeper for iMessage, you don't have to worry about this, but if you don't, then you should create a link or QR code with QuickShare, like I talked about earlier, that'll allow you to send videos in full quality. I have a lit video on this, a very specific video on this topic that goes into more depth as well. I'll drop that below if you wanna check it out. Uh, learn to use icon packs. So one of the really cool things about Samsung versus iOS is you can actually install custom icon packs. You can see the one I have here. Once again, if you download GoodLock and the Theme Park module, this will let you install custom icon packs from the Play Store. The one I'm using is called Vera Icon Pack. This is the icon pack changer. Uh, Vera Icon Pack, I also use Aries, some of the other ones. I love these icons, they're absolutely beautiful uh, from my friend One4 Studio. And it's really fun to start customizing your phone. That's a lot of what I do on this channel. So if you enjoy customizing your phone and you like that guy aspect of Samsung, definitely subscribe. We have a lot more stuff about that. Uh, learn the rest of the good lock functionality. So good lock is an awesome set of modules. I just talked about a couple of them, but you can customize your keyboard look, your quick settings, your lock screen. Uh, you can customize how your app drawer looks. You can customize how your app launcher looks, uh, your clock face. You can get cool effects for your notifications. Uh, change your one-handed use. Everything on this channel, though, I kind of go through all these. This is one of the biggest things I do on this channel is talk about updates to various Samsung apps, particularly GoodLock and the new features. So if you stay subscribed to this channel and check it out, you'll definitely learn a lot about how to do that. Uh, swipe to text on the Samsung phone and multitasking and widgets. These three things are all better on Samsung. So uh, with the Samsung keyboard, it's easy you know, to swipe to text. One thing that I find very difficult on iPhones, and I often make a lot of typos when I type, is swipe to text. It's not very easy to use. The other thing that's awesome about the Samsung keyboard is if you long press on the space bar, you can use it to seek inside of your message and make edits. Very, very cool. That's another aspect that I love about it. So swipe to text is much improved. I think voice to text is much improved as well. Samsung has done a great job with AI. The iPhone one is, is good, but I think Samsung is actually a little better now with voice text. So I know a lot of you out there are fans of that. I think you'll find the switch to Samsung great for that particular reason as well. Multitasking and widgets. Well, multitasking, obviously Samsung is, is the undeniable king. You can do pretty much anything. I've showed you the pop-up view, but of course you can also tap any icon in here and you can open it in split screen view. You can open up any other app down here that you want, Instagram and Twitter at the same time. You can switch them. You can favorite this right here so that you can make sure that you add this for later. You can add this app pair over here to your edge panel so you can recall it later on. Just so much multitasking you can do on your Samsung device. And that's what I really love about it in addition to the customization. Now widgets, you can see this widget I have right here. This comes from an app called KWGT, which allows you to customize thousands of unique widgets on your Samsung or Android phone. I made a full video tutorial on this, but it's something you don't have on iOS. You really can't get third-party widgets. You're limited to exactly what Apple allows you to have and nothing more. That's the huge benefit of a Samsung phone. You can open up the entire potential of your device and not be closed off in the way that Apple wants you to be. The last thing here are two points that I know I want to mention. Instagram replays from the part of the video you're at. Someone mentioned to me when I was trying to prepare for this video that on iPhones, uh, you scroll past a video on Instagram and it automatically restarts the video once you come back. Like if I'm watching a video here and I go down, it does not do that. It automatically comes back to the part that I was on. Um, if you're on an iPhone, then it will go all the way back to the beginning of the video, uh, even if you're like a minute or two in, and that's obviously annoying. So that's another benefit in terms of social media. And then the very last thing is smart switch. So when you set up your phone, obviously Samsung's gonna guide you through smart switch. It's very easy to move all of your files and everything from an iPhone. I've done it, it doesn't take much time. You should definitely use a cable to do that. Uh, and then afterwards, start going through the beginning of this video where I talked about all the different equivalent apps that you can kind of set up and decide, you know, which ones you want to use and things like that. I hope I've covered a bunch of the different pain points of switching from iPhone to your Galaxy S24 Ultra. Um, obviously, if people are really interested in this, if this video does well, I'll consider making videos that are specific tutorials on each of these things in a more granular way. But often people are telling me that it's so insurmountable to make the move that it's impossible. And uh, they also wanna know what are the pros and cons, they're a little scared. So maybe this gives you some perspective. I tried to be honest, there are definitely some downsides to leaving your iPhone behind. 
particularly if you don't carry two phones like I do, you're gonna miss some of those things. Mainly iMessage and AirDrop are the two biggest, but like I said, they're substitutes and I would not carry only an iPhone just to get that functionality. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel, also to my newsletter, drop the link below. Uh, if you do buy a Samsung phone through our link uh, at the launch periods, you get a free mystery box, case cleaning kit, all that stuff. Appreciate you guys checking it out. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.